Today we're going to be talking about building roads, so I thought I should dress for it. Have you ever been riding along in your family's vehicle along the highway and suddenly you have to stop because someone dressed like this holds up a stop sign? Usually that uh, means that the road's being, being fixed or sometimes a new part added onto it. And usually there's lots of big machines as well, things that move earth around. Sometimes there's those ones with the big rollers that smooth out the earth. And today in our Bible reading, we're going to hear about making crooked roads straight and rough roads smooth. Today's reading is from Luke 3, and we're actually going to be reading about someone we heard about a couple of weeks ago. Remember we read about Zachariah and Elizabeth? That couple who were very old and they'd always wanted a baby, but they had never had a baby. And then an angel came to Zechariah and told him that he and Elizabeth were going to have a baby boy. And remember that the angel told them that God wanted them to name their baby John. And the angel also told Zechariah that John would be filled with God's Holy Spirit and he would help prepare people's hearts for the coming of the Messiah. Well, that baby was born, they named him John, and today we're reading about what happened when he was all grown up. In Luke 3, first we read what the prophet Isaiah had said way back in the Old Testament, that a voice would cry out in the desert to prepare a way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him, every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked roads shall become straight, and the rough ways smooth. And that voice that was crying out in the desert was John's voice. And he was telling people to prepare the way for Jesus. Now in John's day, roads were not very good. They didn't have big machines that fixed them. So if someone important like a king was going traveling, people would be sent ahead to move big rocks out of the way and fill in holes and smooth out the really rough spots. So the people John was talking to would understand that it was important to prepare the way for a king. And the king that we read about in this passage is not just any old king. It is the king of kings, Jesus, who is coming. But John wasn't telling the people to make an actual road. Oh, so I guess I don't really need my hard hat. I guess I don't really need my high -vis vest. It's not an actual road. No, what John was really telling the people was that they needed to prepare themselves for the coming of the Lord. So they needed to repent of their sins so that their hearts would be ready for Jesus' coming. We talked a lot about getting ready in the last few weeks, didn't we, because of Advent leading up to Christmas. We talked about getting ready for Jesus coming as a baby at Christmas. And we also talked about getting ready for Jesus to come when he comes again to create the new heaven and the new earth. So now that Christmas is over for this year, we still are getting ready because we're always getting ready for Jesus to come again. And the way we get ready for Jesus to come is to prepare our hearts by asking God to forgive our sins so that our hearts are always ready for Jesus. So I thought it would be good for us to try a craft that will help us to remember this. So what you're going to need to do is make two heart shapes. So I have some paper here and I'm just going to cut mine out because I've actually practiced this a little bit. So I think I can do it without needing a pattern. There we go. We have a couple of hearts now. You might need um, somebody older to draw it maybe for you, or um, you can get a pattern off the computer to make it. The important thing is that you have two hearts and that they are the same size and the same shape. So when I put them together, it looks like just one. So you're going to put one of those two hearts down because you're not going to do anything else with it right now. And the, this piece, you're going to cut it into shapes like you were making a puzzle. Now, if you're younger, just do two or three shapes. If you're older, make five or six shapes. And when you have them all cut apart, you need to set them on the whole heart and make sure that they all fit together. And then on each one of those pieces, you're going to write something that's a sin, something that's something we do wrong, something that is a thing we do that is not pleasing to God. So I have some examples here. I have made fun of someone, 
disobeyed mom or dad, said a bad word, Whoop. Heard, a, heard a friend's feelings, and told a lie. So what you're going to do once you have something written on each one of your heart pieces, you're going to put them onto the heart so that they make a heart again. Try holding it up here where you can see it a little better. So we're going to put those all onto the heart. So I'm going to set mine down here so I can do that a little easier. See if I can make them fit back together. Hmm, it's just trickier than I thought it would be. There's that one. Oh, that one fits. Uh, that one fits. Oh, this one's over here. Oh, there we go. I've got my heart back together. So, once all those are on there, you can see. Whoop. Yes, I should have done just two or three pieces. There. You can see them on there. And when those pieces are on there, you can see that sin covers over our hearts. Okay. But when we pray and ask God to forgive our sins, he wipes them away so that our hearts are clean again. So when we ask for forgiveness, it makes our hearts clean and ready for Jesus. So this can be a reminder to you when you do your craft this week to remember that God forgives our sins and wipes them away so that our hearts are clean and ready for Jesus. I hope everyone has a great week.